Hello, my name is Stephen Mayu, and this is my video series on practical JavaScript where I walk you through the algorithm challenges at freecodecamp.com. In this video, we're going to tackle the last challenge in the advanced section and the last challenge uh, period uh, so far that, uh, that we have in Free Code Camp. So um, let's just jump right into it and uh, let's get to work. Okay, so um, it's called pairwise, and uh, we're going to have two arguments, and we're going to have an array of integers. And the second argument is just uh, one integer. So given an array, find the element pairs whose sum equal the second argument and return the sum of their indices. So um, the, the sum of the indices, it means the sum of the index numbers. So remember, uh, in an array, you have index 0, index 1, index 2, and so on. So uh, we're returning those sums, uh, not, the, not the actual integers in the array. If multiple pairs are possible that have the same numeric elements but different indices, return the smallest sum of indices. Once an element has been used, it cannot be reused with another pair. So, for example, we have an array of uh, these integers, and uh, the second argument is 20. So, uh, 7 plus 13 is 20, so that is index uh, 0 and 3. Uh, 0 plus 3 is 3. And 9 and uh, 11 also equal 20. So 9 and 11 are at index uh, 1 and 2, respectively. So uh, we've got 3 from the first operation, plus 3 from the second operation, and that returns 6. OK, so uh, it recommends that we use the reduce method. So let's go ahead and use the reduce method. Um, we're going to call it on the first argument, so array.reduce. We pass it in a callback. And normally, we just use uh, two arguments for the reduce method, the accumulator and the current uh, object, so number. Um, I also want to use two additional arguments, the index argument. Um, basically, it just returns the index number uh, of the current item that we're uh, on as we iterate through this array, and also um, the array itself. So that just references the entire array, in this case, ARR. OK? So we've got that. And um, it's always a good idea when you're using the accumulator to, um, to, uh, to give it a default value. Um, in this case, we're going to return a number. So let's give it a default value of 0. All right. So um, we're going to start you know, right here uh, through the first iteration. And then, um, and then I want to add it up with the, uh, with the other numbers one by one. So I think a for loop is going to be good for that. So for bar x equals index plus one. Okay, so uh, the value of, uh, of x is always going to be um, uh, plus one, the, the current index uh, in our reduce method. So in the first iteration, index would be 0, and I want to add up uh, everything uh, to the right of the current number, so that's why I'm adding plus 1. So we're going to just keep going until the end of the array. So x is less than uh, array.length, okay, and I'm just accessing it using the uh, fourth uh, kind of optional argument, and then x++. plus plus. Okay, so now we need to do... Um, um, a conditional kind of check. So let's see here. Uh, if index, sorry, if array index, so if the value of, uh, of this number, okay, if we add that to array x and it's equal to the argument, that's perfect. So in that case, if that is the case, we're going to take the accumulator. We're going to add to it. So I'm going to say index plus x. Okay, so we are um, we have to return the sum of the indices, the index numbers, not the values themselves. Okay, uh, and then we want to uh, we can't reuse those index numbers if that's the case. So what I'm going to say now is array index equals array x equals not a number. Okay? And 
we can do multiple variable assignment like this on a single line. So uh, we start at the right and then we proceed left. So array uh, x is equal to not a number. And then index, array index is equal to array x. So, um, you know, if a equals b and b equals c, then a equals c. So it's just sort of an associative uh, kind of um, property that we're doing. And, uh, and then after our for loop, um, we got to just be sure to return the accumulator so that we can uh, continue um, you know, reducing this array into a single value. And if I run that, there we go. Hasta la vista challenge. Um, so that, that's basically it. Uh, we are yeah, iterating through an array and uh, we're just adding up the index numbers if um, those values um, add up to the second argument, uh, this, this argument right here. And um, I mean, just one thing to make this a bit faster. Um, after we have, um, you know, after we have, you know, added, you know, two numbers together, uh, we can't reuse um, the same index numbers. So if this condition is true, you know, we can just break out of this loop and just put the break command there. Uh, for such a small array that we have right now, I mean, it probably wouldn't make a difference in performance. But if we were doing this operation on an array with like, I don't know, 100,000 integers or a million integers, um, this, this loop, it would just continue to, um, to, to, to go in through the end of the array. And doing that, you know, so many times that that would just be such a huge memory leak. There's no reason to, to proceed to iterate through all those integers anyway, uh, because the instructions tell us that we can't, um, that we can't reuse an element once it's been used. So we might as well just throw in the break command so we can jump out of this for loop and then just return the accumulator. Um, if you want to try that yourself, if you want to test it out, you know what, let's just, let's just test it out right now. Um, I'm going to open up a REPL. We got enough time and I've already shown you the solution. So let me, let me tell you what I mean here. Okay. Um, see, do, 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 do. Okay. Let's make this font uh, large. And just to save time, I'm going to copy and paste my code. Right here. Okay. All right. And instead of this uh, argument right here, I am going to, um, I'm going to create a new array. Let's see. Let's see. Var. Let's see. Array. We'll call it, or we'll call it var test. And uh, let's add in a hundred thousand integers. Okay, I'm going to do this with uh, with just a simple for loop. So for var i equals one, i is uh, it's less than or equal to a hundred thousand. Seven hundred thousand. Yep. I plus plus. Okay, and then just test dot push i. All right, and instead of uh, this array literal, I'm just going to pass in my test right here. Okay, uh, and a, a really cool way to uh, to you know to log out like how long an operation takes. Okay, we're going to use um, we're going to use something called console time. Okay, so let's call this var okay, I think we can just do it like this console.time let's see record let's see we'll call it test okay and then after we have finished it we're going to say console.time end and then give the same name Okay, so basically, whatever is between my time and my time end, what is this? Oh, um, it's going to tell us how long it takes. This is stored in a variable right here. So let's run this test. We're going to iterate through 100,000 integers uh, without the break command. Okay, and hopefully this does not crash my browser. Oops. Reference error X is not defined. Wait. 
What do you mean X is not defined? Oops, it's right here in my loop. All right. Okay, and it looks like it's going. It looks like it's going. Wow, this is taking a very long time. So, all right, you can see right here, uh, this took, all right, seven, over 7,000 milliseconds, so seven seconds to run this operation. Now, remember, the uh, free code camp instructions told us that once we use an index, we can't reuse it. So with this loop right here, it's just going to keep iterating through, uh, through, uh, through our uh, elements, uh, even though we've used it. And we don't have to do that. We might as well just break out of a loop um, if, we, if we found that the two uh, work together. So now I'm going to do the same test. This time, I'm going to add that break in command, uh, break command right in there. And uh, let's see how, how much faster this runs. So I'm going to run it. And I uh, thought it would be a little bit faster. Oh, for some reason, that was slower. Okay. Um, let me put the break outside of here. Let's see, would that work? Oh, okay. There we go. Um, let's see. 10 milliseconds, that does not seem right. Huh. What happens? All right, let's see. Let's put it right here. And I, I haven't tested this out before I recorded the video, guys. I'm just kind of doing this on the fly. Okay, let's see, does it? Nah, that wouldn't pass the test. Okay, so it seems like there isn't a significant amount of a performance difference. Maybe it's because huh, you would think that it would it would be a much bigger uh, performance. Um, much better for performance. Let's see, let's try it again. Okay, we're getting about 8,000 seconds. Let's run it again. Huh, that is so strange. For some reason, breaking out of the loop is slower than, uh, than not putting that break statement in there. Um, anyway, uh, my assumption was wrong. I'd have to like play around with this just to make it, um, you know, a little bit faster and see what's happening with it actually. But um, I guess, uh, I guess, even though my assumption was wrong about that break statement, uh, this was a good opportunity to teach you about console time and time end, so that you can actually measure how long it takes certain operations to run. So um, my hypothesis was absolutely false. I have to refactor and make this a little bit faster. But uh, hey, that's what coding is all about. OK, so that's it for this video. We've completed all of the challenges, uh, all 46. And uh, congratulations if you made it this far. Um, uh, doing these challenges is a good foundation. But trust me, there's uh, so much more that you can learn uh, about, uh, about JavaScript. Um, there's so much more, um, you know, object methods, array methods that, that you can learn. Um, you know, there's a new version of JavaScript right now, uh, ES6 um, or ES7 actually is the newest version. And, um, you, you know, I, I've been using ES5 for all of these um, uh, videos. So, um, you know, if you want to continue learning, uh, you know, keep going for the, you know, the newer version as well. Um, there's a lot of frameworks. Uh, front-end frameworks like, like React and Angular and um, on the server side there's Node.js so even though you've got like a good foundation now after watching these videos there's still tons more to learn so I encourage you to uh, to keep hacking away. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for improvement please let me know in the comments below and uh, that's it for this video series. Uh, let me know what else you would like to learn and I'll create a new series. Okay, goodbye for now. Good luck and happy coding. Boop.